in uh, Astana, well, Nur Sultan. Um, I'm actually, it's exactly afternoon for me now. I'm currently in Belgium. You can probably see uh, my home office uh, in the back, my little library, and also my home entertainment system. The, uh, I'm very pleased to actually introduce uh, someone who has spoken to you uh, before at least two times, and that's Dr. Amar uh, Yunas. Uh, we discovered that actually we're lifelong friends. We connected through LinkedIn. We don't know how that happened, but it did happen. So that basically means we're lifelong friends. Now, what Amar will be talking about today is um, it's his third talk, and he will try to integrate the various uh, aspects he has uh, covered previously is about emerging regulatory trends in technologies in Kazakhstan but also the broader Central Asian countries, so the region as a whole. Uh, just before the call started, actually, I was discussing with Amar uh, ethics uh, about AI, and this is actually a topic that he covered in the past. And globally, this is actually at the forefront of the discussion about uh, the proliferation of artificial intelligence. And one of the things that Amar suggested is actually that we should actually have our own ethic principles uh, with reference to AI. And I think it's a great idea. So um, to our participants, actually, uh, if any one of you could actually uh, help uh, propose some ideas with reference to this and maybe work together with uh, Amar and the AIFC Academy of Law, I think that would be really great. So, uh, also, interestingly, about uh, Amar's background, and I'm not going to read everything about it, is that he's a medical doctor. So uh, I don't think we ever had a medical doctor, apart from Amar, of course, uh, speaking at the AIFC Academy of Law. So it actually, it illustrates the diversity of uh, his background, uh, in, in addition to the fact that he's coming from uh, Pakistan. So let me now hand over to uh, Amar, who's actually Dr. Amar Yunas who's going to be talking about emerging regulatory trends in technologies in Kazakhstan and Central Asian countries, and where he will try to integrate the various aspects that he has covered in the past. I will have to leave the call, but I will be back at the end. And in, in order to thank uh, Amar and to provide some closing comments, uh, over to you, Amar, and uh, have a great webinar together with our participants at the AFC Academy of Law. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Alexander. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Is it is it visible? It is visible indeed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to uh, Professor Alexander and uh, AIFC Academy of Law and all the participants uh, who have been with me. They, their feedback actually motivated me a lot. And uh, based on their feedback, I have prepared this uh, two days presentation. Once again, uh, I am very honored uh, and privileged to be uh, concluding this uh, series of webinar. And uh, today, I will talk about uh, emerging regulatory trends in technology in Central Asia, particularly in Kazakhstan. A uh, little bit uh, historical background, as you know, as you might have uh, known from my previous webinars that uh, I usually start with uh, uh, a historical background. Today I have uh, chosen this picture. Uh, this is from uh, colonial China, when China was colonized by Britishers. So actually, we all know that uh, uh, they were selling their goods and in return, they were buying, they were getting opium. So they were selling the original goods and as a price, they were getting opium. And uh, this is very interesting uh, uh, scenario when we talk about uh, regulatory trends. You have to uh, buy something, but uh, in return, what you are getting you think that it is useful, but it is not. So as we know that uh, then China uh, went into the opium wars, there were three wars, but before the opium wars, we all know that uh, China was uh, uh, urban market economy. 
and uh, then what happened that uh, it started prematurely adopting uh, the western industries uh, and then uh, there was there was a competition between local industry and the uh, uh, imported goods and at the end what happened china had to suffer so if we try to project uh, something what is happening right now in central asia we can see that uh, a lot of investors are offering so many things to to uh, central asia but in central asia but in return central asia has uh, not much to offer so first of all i would like to define what is uh, uh, reg tech or what we are going to talk uh, is different from reg tech so reg tech uh, is uh, uh, regulatory technologies uh, regulatory technologies we say when we use technology to solve different regulatory problems so this is not something which we are going to talk we will just uh, just uh, discuss a couple of elements of uh, reg tech uh, 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 another version of reg tech you can say that fintech we will we will talk about fintech at the end of the presentation but uh, reg tech is uh, the use of technology for solving regulatory problems but we will talk about regulatory trends means what types of technologies are there and what types of regulations we need to uh, you know accommodate those technologies to get benefit of those technologies so a little bit about reg tech uh, what type of regulatory challenges today we are suffering we have seen recently brexit happened we have seen a different uh, uh ngos they are protesting for different types of uh, individual rights so all of these scenarios uh, they create two different uncertainties and different uncertainties uh, they call for different regulations for an example i will i will quote this uh, question i have talked about it previously as well when we were talking about ai ethics uh, that uh, when we are talking about robotics there are many people who are posing this question that will buying and selling of conscious robots consider as slavery now why i am giving this example you can say that uh, there is technology which seems that it is beneficial for the mankind but there are people who are who are calling for this thing because they can foresee the future or they think that these types of problems will emerge in the future so that's why we need to have regulatory mechanisms or if we talk about corporate social responsibility previously when organizations started functioning no one was caring about uh, social business or the social uh, uh, morality or uh, rights of uh, the, the employees or employers but today we have a full fledged science of corporate social responsibilities and uh, an organization Uh, cannot work until unless they have regulations related to corporate social morality or corporate social responsibility because uh, the employees and employers both demands their right and they want that to be written on paper in terms of certain regulations businesses are taking pressure from different social values and and social cost is being calculated of different goods which businesses were producing for example different brands which supposed to be very liberal progressive and democratic now they have understood that uh, they have to have a, a certain mechanism to fulfill the demands of their specific clients so they are producing those products to meet the demands of their specific clients and it is all being done by making or revising certain regulations on which they were previously working if we talk about some other interesting things for example environmental cost previously no one would no one cared about environmental cost of the goods now everyone is talking about environmental cost environmental pollution environmental damages there is a, a wave of uh, activism can be observed in uh, mostly in europe and uh, other uh, western countries uh, some of them they are very polite like uh, greta and some of them they are very aggressive but environmentalism is a fact and uh, regulatory trends uh, are emerging when we talk about environmental protection and definitely you will be agree with me that we have done enough damage to the environment uh if we talk about uh, nano medicine which is my area of interest uh, this is something uh, new 
and emerging technology but unfortunately there are not many regulations when it comes to the research of of uh, uh, nanomedicine medical cannabis is an interesting uh, area uh, there are so many people who are talking about regulatory trends of uh, medical cannabis different countries have actually made laws related to the use of medical cannabis and and we have seen that uh, the, this is a a new thing uh an, an, a new precedent has been set that uh, the things which were apparently useless uh, now people are thinking about making laws about them so that they can be regulated and other interesting example of uh, technology and the regulatory trends can be the data and european union has been very enthusiastic about making those those uh, laws related to the data protection so data was a new technology and emerging technology and then the whole european union had to come up with a new set of uh, eu data protection laws which can give uh, an understanding that how important is it to tackle the technology uh, this example you might have seen that uh, estonia has introduced these uh, e residency uh, for foreigners and their own you know the the uh, identity identity card is actually uh, comprises of uh, everything you can you can use it for driving license you can use it for voter id you can use it as your atm card for security purposes so this thing is working very effi efficiently and all of this happened because of uh, strong regulations being there then we are talking about ethical productions ethical productions means uh, the companies now they are making regulations they are not allowed to produce whatever they want they are not allowed to sell to whomever they want to sell but they have to uh, fulfill the criteria of ethical productions and there are number of criteria one company should fulfill so uh, if we take uh, example of uh, new emerging technologies technology is there this is an example of reg tech technology is there to regulate uh, the, uh, the different types of uh, uh, new innovations uh, and technology is being used uh, to uh, regulate those areas which previously was were being neglected for example environment autonomous robotic surgery i have talked it is a new technology and there are number of regulatory trends emerging to deal with this autonomous uh, robotic surgery so if we just summarize that what are some of the contemporary regulatory trends how the regulatory trends are emerging we can categorize into these categories for example there is a huge social influence and social pressure i gave the example of environmentalism people are talking about data protection and privacy previously we have talked about uh, different technologies for example uh, security cameras we have talked about uh, uh, social surveillance system uh, people are worried about uh, uh, their privacy and data protection and because of this worry they are calling for different types of uh, regulations so one contemporary trigger which is triggering the regulatory trend you can say that it is the social influence and the social pressure the second important trigger is economic competition different types of import and export policies are a good example of this for example in china there is a positive list and negative list in positive list there are certain things you can import and export in negative list there are certain things you can do import and export of those things so in order to secure the local market different governments they are introducing their own import and export policies in order to balance the competition so economic competition is also an important regulatory trend then we talked about environmental uh, activism this is tri triggering the regulations previously we had uh, we had no laws related to uh environmental protection no one was caring about uh, environment but uh, today we have number of laws related to the environmental protection there are ecological policies then uh, uh, another important trigger is uh, uh, our health concerns we have seen this in 
post covid and covid era that number of policies has come many countries have actually modified their laws many new policies have been introduced to meet the demand of concerns of public health so health is also an important contemporary regulatory trigger and finally if we talk about uh, what is happening in all over central asia so many laws have uh, uh, been enacted related to digitalization and uh, e government and uh, use of new innovation technology so this all fall in the public management upgradation so the public management upgradation requires new laws and new policies which is happening in central asia so these are a couple of uh, contemporary regulatory triggers uh, which are uh, which can be used as a reference point that why new regulations are coming so new regulations are, com are coming because of because of these uh, different reasons so if we talk about uh, the overview of uh, this webinar series in the beginning of the first seminar i posed three big question the first question was that how we can use law to incentivize new technologies means we need new regulations so that we can get benefits of new technologies then we posed the question that how do we use law to regulate the new technologies we need laws to regulate the existing technologies and finally we need technologies to improve laws so today we are talking about this third question that how the new technologies can be used to improve the laws this is a good example that uh, when we talk about uh, innovation we have law so the law try to tackle the new innovation but uh, if this innovation is not fulfilling the demands of the previous law then we have to make a new law and uh, this is something which uh, beg for the question that why do we want to encourage innovation and when is the state intervention required to stimulate innovation so when we talk about why do we want to encourage innovation because innovation is something which we need no matter it is in technology no matter it is in a law but state should be there to regulate the new innovation similarly if we talk about different uh, concerns then the question arises that what concerns arises as a result of the disruption brought by new technology which means that you don't regulate the technology <clears throat> you don't regulate the technology but the technology is destructive then the law has to respond once again to this new technology and uh, these are some of the questions which we discussed previously that uh, there are number of concerns related to new technology for example uh, there are privacy issues autonomy issues fairness discrimination inequality people are concerned about these topics and uh, if we talk about uh, some of the questions which are related to the regulations where the regulations are missing this is the list of question uh, the first question is that financial firms what is the future of financial firms there are number of financial firms are emerging but there are not many laws related to those uh, financial firms if we introduce blockchain what will be the role of bank because it will be a direct relationship between uh, uh, the the buyer the client and the business the role of the bank will finish so what will be the role of banks if blockchain will be there do we need regulations or not or if we talk about more progressive questions for example uh, you can edit your dna should you allow to edit your dna or not or if we talk about autonomous vehicles that autonomous vehicle is a new technology do we need regulations to control these autonomous vehicles or not so the question is that uh, how different technologies are posing challenges for our legal system and how legal system is responding how legal system is re responding this is called as regulatory mechanism and if we talk about regulatory trend regulatory trends are not in response to the law but they are in response to the new technology 
technology comes and then we make new laws so the question is what do we want society to look like in future if we want a progressive society we need regulatory mechanism if we don't want innovations and let the society go as it is going then we don't need regulatory mechanisms at all before giving some more example i would like to share a very interesting news which is an example of importance of regulatory mechanism this happened actually this week uh, like two days ago in china china has introduced uh, the beijing principles of artificial intelligence for children so in beijing uh, academy of artificial intelligence they introduce ai ethical principles for children so just compare how the other countries are doing and what central asia is doing in central asia we are not concerned about artificial intelligence as a technology but in other part of the world they are not only regulating the new technologies but they are looking into different dimensions of these technologies so the beijing consensus of artificial intelligence for children is a good example that how far we have left behind in comparison to some of our immediate neighbors there are four main themes of these beijing consensus of artificial intelligence and there are number of indicators 19 different indicators have been given if you want to see that that this ai technology <clears throat> is beneficial for children or not you have to fulfill you have to see through the prism of these 19 principles so this is just an example that uh, the other countries the other countries where the technological innovation is happening how serious they are about uh, the uh, regulatory mechanisms and how enthusiastically they are working towards uh, Uh, these these types of regulatory mechanisms so i will give three examples to make uh, the importance of regulatory mechanism more clear <clears throat> the first example is the regulating of biotech other example is smart contracts and the third example i will talk about the jobs for the lawyers and unemployment these are some of the issues uh, which uh, are very personal to me and that's why i have taken them as an example if we talk about uh, biotech there are number of moral and ethical dilemmas without addressing those moral and ethical dilemmas you cannot make new regulations for example imagine a world where you can freely edit your your dna so you have been given a chance to edit your dna and doctors can do this for you do you think that this is something which is beneficial for the mankind or we should let doctors do this this is actually happening in number of countries for example uh, these are some of the diseases which can be identified at embryonic stage and uh, if you find that uh, the embryo has one of these diseases you can take precautionary measures uh, in uh, <clears throat> usa for the down syndrome you can actually do this so the question is that uh, should we be able to choose the baby's genetic health this is the question related to the emerging technologies if the answer is yes then there are number of questions there are number of ethical dilemmas and to regulate those ethical dilemmas you have to have regulations so in future we will have designer babies and when we are going towards the designer babies there are different benefits and different costs and different negative impacts of these things which requires regulations if we talk about benefits if we have a designer baby it will be longer longer in life it will live a healthier life and uh, if we talk about uh, what are the negative impacts there will be less diversity there will be more competition and there will be no end because it is a slippery slope so in order to regulate this type of technology because it is an emerging trend in technology we need to have regulations 
another example is uh, the contract the smart contract this is the second example if we look at the graph in last 100 years the world has shown exponential growth and this exponential growth of gdp is uh, because of one thing this is the trust in business because the trust in business increased so the gdp increased the, the correlation is very easy and the business uh, you know the business uh, uh, increased because of the enforcement of contract people were not trusting on each other before the contracts there were number of issues related to uh, the contract law if there is no contract there is uh, the possibility that there will be a conflict but when the contract is there there is a less possibility that there will be conflict so uh, let's imagine this scenario you have to construct a house you can pay the entire amount up front or you can wait until the house will be built and then you can pay but if you pay all the amount for constructing your house up front the problem is that you don't trust on the builder but if you say to the builder that let's wait until you hand over me the uh, house then the builder will not trust because uh, because he, he doesn't know that uh, you will be able to pay him the money or not so what is the third scenario the third scenario is that you make a contract based on blockchain now this is a new emerging technology which has very efficiently very effectively been regulated so what you can do you can you can make a blockchain based contract and this blockchain technology is very helpful when it comes to the execution of the contract so what you have to do you ask the builder that that uh, let's uh, uh, make a contract smart contract and if you will be able to execute execute all the clauses of this smart contract uh, you will get your payment and similarly the builder can do trust on you if you will do any violation still he will get his money so the technology has come we made new regulations and today we are reaping the benefits of these smart contracts previously what we had to do for example this is a this is an example of digital contract this is not a smart contract so when you send an email you save one cup copy and that's it you have no record and this has been used in number of these areas for example in money in stock in uh, ch changing of title of property intellectual property in uh, in voting it has been used the smart the, sorry the cyber contract uh, uh, has been used but uh, this is not efficient what happened with the emergence of blockchain based smart contract uh, now the things have become much more secure you don't need a middleman you don't need a server you don't need a bank to to ensure your trust you can directly deal between two parties and you can execute your contract so this all happened because of our seriousness towards making good regulations related to the execution of smart contracts there are number of uh, disadvantages of smart contracts as well and i will try to explain those disadvantages as well the only disadvantage related to smart contract is that smart contract is not considered as beneficial for small and medium sized businesses as it is considered for big businesses the reason is that the small and medium sized businesses they cannot afford the smart contracts the other thing is that the small and medium sized businesses they play on flexibility means they want their contracts to be flexible but the smart contract requires 100% execution so the small and medium sized businesses they don't have logistical uh, you know they don't have logistics 
to fulfill the 100% criteria of smart contracts. So this is a, a negative, uh, or this is a minus of small, small smart contract. That smart contract is not beneficial for small and medium-sized businesses. Only the big businesses who can execute 100% requirements of small and medium-sized businesses, they can get the benefit of this. So if we take small contract, and we want to make it beneficial for small and medium-sized businesses, what we have to do? We have to make new regulatory mechanism because this is a new technology and a certain group of people is getting benefit out of it. In order to give benefit to the whole society, we need to make new regulations so that all the fractions of society can reap the benefit of the smart contracts. <clears throat> There are a number of other uses of smart contracts. For example, a smart contract is being used in music, smart contract is being used in environmental protection, in audit, in registration, in verification. And wherever you have brought this technology, which is smart contract, you have to modify your regulatory principle. You have to modify your regulatory laws. Third, Example is the, the disruption of lawyers and legal services. A lot of people, they are worried about uh, uh, their jobs and definitely the jobs uh, have been disturbed. Because of emergence of technologies and because of lack of regulatory trends, uh, many people have lost their jobs. And these are a number of uh, you know, issues which we can uh, talk about uh, if we talk about uh, the innovation technologies. Technology has come and these types of number of issues have emerged for which we don't have any regulations by now. And if we want to overcome these issues, we need to have new regulations. So software is eating, eating up the world. Means if we needed a lawyer previously for something, now this can be done by using a simple software. There are law firms who have introduced different types of chatbots you just go on the website and uh, there is a robot you can uh, chat with that robot and he can give you the accurate opinion because he has to analyze the data a lawyer also analyze the data so you can analyze the data the robot can analyze the data and similarly the robot can predict the outcome of your case much more better than a human lawyer so software is eating up the world means software is taking the jobs of the lawyers. If you want to secure the jobs, you have to come up with the new regulations related to the technologies, or at least you have to set different domains that this is the threshold of the lawyer, and this is the threshold of the chatbot, and here the jurisdictions of the robot ends, and here the jurisdictions of the lawyers starts. Do you remember this from my first webinar? Ned Lut, or we, we talked about the Luddites. Who were these people? Luddites were those people who thought that during the Industrial Revolution that new technologies are coming and we will lose our jobs. That's why we should boycott the new technology. So Luddites are those people who are against technological innovation. So what they were, they were doing, they were destroying the machinery. So during the industry, at the beginning of industrial revolution, in the leadership of Ned Lud, there were people who were called as Ludites. They actually attacked on different industries and destroyed the machineries, saying that they are afraid of losing their jobs because they thought that if they will be replaced with machines, they will die. And it happened uh, that uh, they started protesting against the technology. Now, this is not happening because uh, the benefits of technology are abundant. The only worry that I have already discussed previously, unemployment can easily be tackled by making new laws and regulations or coming up with new regulatory mechanisms. Another example is uh, where, where we don't need human labor at all. This is very interesting scenario and all of you have observed that in accounting and audit or in finance as a whole, now we are not using humans at all. 
all of these big uh, financial companies or audit firms they have very sophisticated softwares and uh, atm machine it is even in 1965 the, the first atm machine started working and a number of other areas where uh, the technology has replaced the humans so what jobs have left for humans this is not a worry that what jobs have left for the humans the worry is that there are no regulations related to the technology and this is something which i am talking about today so a little bit about uh, the fintech uh, previously i gave an, an overview that why technology demands new regulations and now i am going to give two specific examples in which uh, uh, we are working on technological revolution it is in fourth industrial revolution we are working on these things and also we are working on uh, regulatory mechanism the first thing is fintech cryptocurrency central asian countries have recently started making laws related to fintech and uh, uh, i will talk a little bit about cryptocurrencies as well but uh, a little bit uh, background about uh, what is happening in fintech first of all fintech is not a buzzword it, it is much more than than uh, the just simple financial technologies and it comes under the umbrella of reg tech regulatory technologies which we discussed previously so in last 5 years approximately 50 billion dollars have been invested in uh, fintech it is a huge amount of money and uh, there is no data available for last 5 years until 2050 you can see an exponential growth that how the fintech based activities were going on all over the world and how this uh, happened only in 5 years that from 2 billion it reached to the 20 billion dollar activity so if we have to define the fintech we can define that it is a blanket term for disruptive technology which disruptive technology means the new innovative technologies uh, which are affecting our financial services and uh, what is the problem what was the problem when fintech was emerging the problem was the upgradation of the system let's take a simple example this is a metro let's suppose you want to introduce the metro system in your city what you have to do you have to stop the transportation activities in your city until unless the metro start working when you will stop these transportation activities or all sort of other transportation no matter because of construction or installation of metro lot of people will not be able to go for their jobs when they will not go for their jobs the country will go into economical loss similarly if you want to install the financial technology or if you want to convert your your banking system to fintech you have to take a step back when you will take a step back you have to put an halt until unless your financial services start working so what will happen the 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 country will suffer uh, a huge huge economical loss so the people who know that the financial technologies are useful they don't want to take risk by stopping the existing financial system and installing a new financial system because when you will stop to install a new financial system the country will suffer a huge economical loss and no politician no policy maker would want to take credit of this because it will go against in his favor so that's why the the conversion of a banking system to find to fintech based system is very slow but if we talk about technology the technologies are there there are very advanced technologies even in some countries there are banks which are working without any human support means you go and you are dealt by different machines and you can do your transaction very smoothly so point is that technology is there but we don't have any regulations that how to install these technology that's why the process is going very slow 
so what kind of financial technologies we want we want financial technologies to be uh, mobile mobile means that we want them to be in our hand different types of payment systems already we are using different types of payment systems in our mobile phones we want it to be personalized it means you can access your account from your mobile phone you want to be customizable and you want it to be accessible 24 hours for example you want to do shopping you want it to be in your pocket so that you can use it whenever you want fintech has given you all of these things and it happened possible because you have very strong regulatory mechanisms related to fintech financial technologies have been introduced with strong regulatory mechanism that's why we have mobile personalized customized and accessible technology now another example is e-commerce central asia is doing very well in terms of e-commerce there are different types of e-commerce in terms of uh, transaction part participants there are different types of e-commerce goods physical goods digital goods and services you can do buying and selling of these through internet <clears throat> there are different types of business models for example drop shipping private labeling warehousing so there are there are so many different types of models uh, 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 just for the students who are listening to me what is drop shipping the drop shipping is that you order to one company and this company has a connection with the third company so it deliver you the product through this third company for example you order something to amazon amazon has connection with the third company the third company will deliver you this product and amazon will take money so there is no connection between amazon and this third company you directly receive product from this third company but credit goes to amazon this is called as drop shipping white labeling is uh, that uh, you produce one product and then rebrand it and the company knows that you have rebranded for example nike or uh, hang 10 or diesel or other closing companies they allow other countries to use their other companies to use their brand so these are different different models of uh, uh, e-commerce uh, businesses they are functioning theoretically speaking there are so many legal challenges for example in the case of drop shipping you order from one company but another company is delivering you means you are doing contract with one company but the second company is driving you on the behalf of first company but there is no conflict because there is regulation if we talk about white labeling branding the company which has uh, no connection with the original company is producing the original brand there can be so many questions related to intellectual property or just by the ethical point of view it seems not acceptable but just because we have strong regulations we allow this type of businesses so now i gave two examples two technologies the first is fintech which is being regulated by using regulatory mechanism and the second example is e-commerce the e-commerce is being regulated or at least countries are trying to regulate so now i will talk about e-commerce regulations in central asia to tell you that at which stage central asia is standing the first case is the case of uh, kazakhstan and uh, the credit goes to kazakhstan that they are taking lead when it comes to the e-commerce that uh, 700 billion thing uh, has been circulated through the e-commerce in uh, 2019 and uh, and interestingly the businesses in central asia they are taking pride in shifting their traditional businesses to e-commerce on the other hand people are enthusiastically adopting e-commerce based businesses or they are appreciating the businesses who are uh, you know delivering the products through through different websites there are number of scenarios there are number of factors uh, means uh, the economy is big the literacy rate is much more higher the the people are uh, in better economical conditions than all other central asian countries 
but the, the 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 element which i want to highlight is that the kazakhstan has strong regulations related to e-commerce in 2019 the volume of non cash payments increased 2.3 times which is about 14.4 trillion tenge and uh, kazakhstan has introduced a road map uh, last year for uh, five year six year plans uh, for uh, introducing uh, the better mechanisms for uh, regulations of ecom it would be uh, you know uh, from my side uh, i think that i should give credit to uh, astana international financial center for introducing number of regulations in number of areas and uh, if you go on the websites of uh, aifc and uh, the the sister uh, you know domains of uh, this aifc you can see there are very detailed regulations related to so many things not only related to the taxation but related to the fintech you can find regulation and there are not only regulations but aifc has their rehabilitation mechanisms they are engaging different specialists from different part of the world arbitrators are being involved different lawyers and judges are being involved aifc has its own court so this is a good example that in kazakhstan first of all the people want e-commerce or fintech based systems government is in interested in promoting this government is regulating this government is introducing uh, different institutions like aifc and this institution is not only making regulations but also it is working on rehabilitations and uh, on, uh, on on you know if there will be a conflict how to settle this conflict by introducing different laws and even introducing its own code so when it comes to the e-commerce regulations or fintech regulations uh, kazakhstan is taking lead in central asia in uzbekistan in uzbekistan the volume of the e-commerce based business is very low but the interesting thing is that when it comes to the number of rules and regulations they are much more than all the other central asian countries so the volume of money which is circulating in e-commerce is it is very small but uh, when it comes to the regulatory mechanism it is very strong regulatory mechanism which is placed there so there are number of laws you can see this list there are uh, presidential decrees there are decrees of, by cabinet of ministers there are specialized laws uh, there are different uh, you know internal regulations at institutional level related to the e-commerce so there are so many laws related to the e-commerce but still it is the volume of money which is circulating in e-commerce business it is it is slowly slowly improving uh, recently recently it has been uh, reported that uh, by the year 2021 uh there will be a virtual cash registered or the regulations related to this are being introduced so let's see how the transactions will be noted in the cyber space so we are looking forward what uzbekistan is going to do if we talk about tajikistan tajikistan has left behind uh, there are some internet companies who are offering uh, uh, e business but when it comes to the rules and regulations uh, we don't see any exclusive rule related to e-commerce or fintech but uh, it is expected that they will be in uh, in the race at least at regional level in the upcoming years uh, two years ago they had some uh, you know digital transaction related to the tax but when it comes to the uh, e-commerce we don't see a formal big law in tajikistan in kyrgyzstan Kyrgyzstan has an exclusive law related to electronic commerce and uh, the good thing about this law is that uh, this law does not talk only about uh, the conduct of e-commerce it also talks about uh, the laws 
special related laws related to the conflicts which emerge in case of electronic commerce so in kyrgyzstan we have some laws related to the electronic commerce and they are also doing very well in turkmenistan first thing is that uh, not much news are coming from turkmenistan but uh, uh, it was reported in uh, the local media uh, in the beginning of this year that they are working turkmenistan is working on e-commerce laws let's see when this law will be out and then we will be able to comment on the efficiency of this law uh, this is also something which i want to mention and recently uh, you might have uh, known that uh, i have uh, uh, our company imo innovation consultant has introduced uh, a report of 5g technology laws in central asia and thanks to aifc once again they have also published this uh, report uh, you can find it in their fortnightly journal of uh, aifc legal tech journal it is a fortnightly journal you can find these regulations uh, they have been published there so why i am mentioning about 5g technology first of all it is emerging technology and then the whole financial system is somehow based somehow dependent on the speed of internet so uh, 5g technology in central asia is coming some countries are taking lead and some countries they are working on it if you want to know more about 5g regulations in central asia you can go on the website of aifc legal tech uh, a journal or you can find it on our website we have published a report related to this so for a conclusion i will i will just conclude with the, some suggestions for the government that how the emerging technologies can be regulated the first thing is that we need to develop and promote favorable policies and regulatory framework i gave couple of examples related to fintech and e-commerce and 5g technology that there are regulatory mechanism but in the beginning of my lecture i gave number of example from medical sciences from blockchain from uh, uh, employment perspective that there are no regulations so we need to make new regulation then we need to think about legal progression with the same pace as the technology is progressing technology is progressing so we need new laws with the same pace as the technology is progressing and then we need to involve all the stakeholders no matter from which fraction of society they belong if it is a stakeholder he should be involved to make new laws related to new innovation technologies <clears throat> and then we need to uh, promote a healthy culture and in the beginning i gave example of beijing principles of ai inter artificial intelligence for children means they are engaging the children as well so that's why if we take exam those example and compare them with central asia we are not engaging our our society we are engaging our specialists we are engaging some part of academia but we need to engage all the domains of uh, of the society and all the stakeholders and then it is very important to think about uh, increasing the bandwidth and broadband challenges uh, it is not a question of technology it is also the question of policy if you read our report related to 5g technologies in central asia you will understand that how it is a policy issue so the better speed of internet is very important without better speed of internet we cannot convert our traditional business to the electronic businesses and uh, the most important thing is that those countries who are not uh, doing anything related to e-commerce or e-business in post covid world they have to seriously think about e-business so if they are not thinking they should start working by bringing new policies related to this uh and i would uh, just uh, conclude by saying that covid 19 was uh, a challenging era but this covid 19 has uh, realized this fact to everyone that collaboration is very important and collaboration is one of the key elements of the fourth industrial revolution which brings uh, many challenges for not only for policy maker but but for the social scientists and for the normal populates of the country 
So this COVID-19 somehow been very positively impacting on our attitude towards new policy making. So we should continue this collaboration in the post-COVID era as well. And uh, that's the conclusion of my today's presentation. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I am willing to uh, answer to those questions. Thank you, Professor, for your presentation. As of now, we have several questions. Uh, the first question is from Ainur Kanafina. She is asking, what kind of regulation do you envisage to be developed in the educational technology sector in Central Asia? Thank you very much. Very interesting question. And uh, uh, this was something which I was mentioning uh, at the end of my presentation that we need to engage all the fractions of society. We need to engage educationists as well. So now it comes from uh, the educational technology perspective. So government is making regulations related to technologies, but uh, some fractions, for example, uh, the educationists, they feel that they have left it behind. So the first thing is that when any type of uh, regulations are being made related to new innovation technologies, we should involve all the stakeholders, including the educationists. For this purpose, I have given a proposal that the country should have a centralized technology policy, an AI policy. Why it is important? It is important that the government should give direction for all the departments when it comes to the adoption of uh, technology. What happens? That they don't give any regulations, any direction, then all the other departments, they start making their own internal regulations, they start uh, uh, making their own laws and policies, and these policies, they go parallel to each other. The first thing what we need to do is that the government should give a direction, government should make a centralized AI policy or technology policy, and then all the departments, including the Ministry of Education, or anyone who is related to the health or, or business or taxation or no, no matter which part of uh, the, 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 the work of uh, the people, they should follow those regulations. So the answer to this question is that first of all, government should have a centralized policy and then they should involve the stakeholders from all the fractions of society and then those stakeholders should try to meet the goals of this centralized policy. So this is how we can, we can say that uh, in terms of tech educational technology, if we come up with some regulations, if we come up with some laws, and these laws should be beneficial, this is only possible if they meet with the centralized policy. And uh, first of all, we should have a centralized policy. Yes. Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh, at that point, may I propose to finalize since uh, we're almost out of time. To other uh, guests, I can say that you can send your questions to our email. We'll be pleased to answer by email. Thank you. Professor Wanderput, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Almas, and a special thank you to uh, Dr. Amar Yunas and to our audience. I've been able to uh, follow part of it, and uh, it was really insightful. Thank you very much, and especially the, also the way that you addressed the questions. Uh, we hope to have you involved in future events, and, and also I want to follow up on your suggestion of developing some principles around uh, AI ethics. And, and again, I would like to uh, express um, my interest uh, for this particular topic, but also uh, invite our audience to come up with any suggestions in, in, in this field. And, and maybe also whether they have an interest in helping develop these principles uh, through the AIFC Academy of Law. And of course, in cooperation with Dr. Ahmad Yunus. If we're going to develop a reputation in the digital world that includes, the, uh, includes artificial intelligence, this is going to be a, a critical requirement that we are perceived as being responsible ethical players and, and that we understand what the implications are. So um, 
with that, let me give a big hug to uh, Dr. Amar Yunas, who, as you know, is now a lifelong friend. And uh, thank you again. And I look forward to meeting you in person at uh, some stage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, and have a lovely afternoon and even a weekend in beautiful Kazakhstan or in Pakistan. I assume you're there right now. Yes, thank you very much, and I will be staying in touch. And I want to inform that uh, uh, I already have uh, published a report on uh, artificial intelligence laws and regulation in Central Asia. And AIFC Legal Tech, uh, uh, now they are uh, uh, you know, publishing a fortnightly journal. They have published these regulations. So you can uh, have a look on this and definitely uh, I welcome this uh, initiative and uh, I am very happy that you accepted my proposal and uh, uh, I second your saying that in order to paint a uh, progressive image in front of world community, we should come up with our own uh, principles which should be localized and centralized and fulfilling the demand of the region. And for this purpose, uh, I will also uh, would like to welcome any proposal from our audience and definitely in future we will work with AIFC to develop these principles. Thank you very much. Indeed, thank you. And, and indeed, context is very important. So we need to develop our own indeed.